boom, it is officially summer. Pardon my chicken legs, I know they're distracting. We're actually flying to Chicago today, then we're driving to Rockford on a deal we've been working on for quite some time, Mopar No Car. Picking up a 68 Charger, which is the one used in the movie Bullet. We've already rescued a 69, which was in General Lee, Dukes of Hazard, And you saw us rescue the 1970 out of Texas, which was the one that, of course, Vin Diesel drove in Fast and Furious. So what Mopars are we rescuing this time? Well, as I said, the 68 Charger, 70 Super B, the predecessor to the 71. And what I'm actually most excited about, believe it or not, an 89 Ram Charger. So grab your cup of joe and let's go. So we're now in Chicago, we're at Ralph's Car Rental, and we rented a Jeep. They specialize in renting Jeeps. We learned about them in Colorado. The rates are great. They've got a ton of Jeep Wranglers in stock at all times. The rates for Avis today in Chicago were $429 a day. The rates at Ralph's were $99 a day. It's a little bit more effort to get out here, but it's worth it. So let's go to the hotel. Morning, Sean P. Morning. How was your run? It was good. Where's the truck? I had to park your way over there. There's the, well, we can run you over there. Oh, that'd be awesome. All right, well, here's what we're doing today. We're looking at eight cars. We're gonna either buy three or four. How many can you get on the trailer? We've done four before. All right. Well, we're at Rockford, Illinois right now, and these are actually in a storage facility, kind of like on that show Storage Wars. Okay. There's one in each bay, so there's a minor problem. You want to know now or when we get there? Well, I can tell you already the major problem. What's the major problem? I'm really good. I think we can get it in there. I looked at it on Google Maps. So it's not a problem. Just pull the take three in a little storage facility. I guarantee you can get in. I don't even get it out. So you don't want to know the problem until we get there? Because that's not the problem. Okay, what's the problem? They don't have any keys. <laughs> I didn't bring the key to the city. So watch us wrangle these. Grab your cup of joe and let's go. Guys, good morning. How's everybody? Good. Uh, how you doing? Steve. 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 Yep. Dennis Collins. Good to meet you. Zach on the camera. Yeah, how are how you doing? doing? Hi, Dennis Collins. Kevin. Kevin. Yeah. Okay. That's easy to remember. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hi, Dennis Collins. Nice. Nice to meet you, Mike Taylor. Mike. Yeah. Mike. Kevin. Yeah. Steve. Yes, yeah. sir. Well. I am glad y'all are here because I don't know how easy this is going to be. All right. <laughs> I think it's going to be very easy. Okay. Let's see. What do you want to do? This stuff first or the? Okay. So Let me move this Jeep out of the way. I want to see all of it. Gotcha. Okay. That's what I kind of think. Let's look at all of them. So Steve, are we looking at eight cars? Uh, no, it's, uh, let's see. It's seven or eight? It's about seven. You see, there's a truck. Three you're going to get. So six. Six cars. Okay. Five cars in a truck we're going to look at.
the original smoke to Jonathan. Okay, yeah, very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm the one that uh, follow you on YouTube and stuff. Well, thank you for watching. Yeah, well, yeah. Thanks for reaching out. For sure. I told him. I know you, you talked to Jonathan for a while. Yeah, I told him. I said, what the hell are you doing? Selling somebody, selling somebody, going to right. So, yeah. <laughs> Generator on it, factory V8 truck. Mm -hmm. Any idea how long it's been sitting? Steve, how long? I, we initially came. I initially came Over down here uh, three years ago with him Steve. in uh, 2019. Okay. He had brought his granddad back to Detroit around 2017 or something. So okay. we we assume at least maybe nine years or so. Cause they're all titled for like. He's been paying on these units for like 10 years. Wow. It's pretty, pretty decent, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, that's why I told. I, I tried to explain to Jonathan. I'm like, these are pretty good project cars, you know. I do collision work myself, paint body, so I know. Well, project. This is a. This would be a really good survivor yeah. with some clear coat on the patina. Yeah. Oh. I thought a nice little rat rod or something. Oh, whatever you want, whatever floats somebody's boat. Uh, date coat. Real cheap date coat on the fender. That's pretty neat. Was it red originally? Uh, we don't know. I would assume so. Well, the, the paint coat should tell you, right? Fender right. I'd say it was red. Right. Red and black and blue. Right. <laughs> All right, what's cool. next? This the Imperial. This Holy is crap. by far probably the cleanest one. When we came out a couple years ago, I had them washed. We uh, had some guys right. washed them. Yeah, we pushed it out. This is by far probably the cleanest one out of all. Correct me if I'm wrong, Imperial was one of the most expensive cars that they made of that time. That's correct. Because you, Rolls Royce. You had Chrysler, but Imperial was its own line. It was kind of like when you had GM and then you had Cadillac. Oh, okay. So this okay. was the Cadillac for Chrysler. Okay. Right. But Imperial was its own line. But what's unique about this is most of these were four doors. I think this is a two door. Yeah, this is a two door. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a two door. Yeah, this is a two door. The neatest option you could get on these, which this one does not have it. Was they had a, see how this, the spares like here? Yeah, the kind of on the convertible, the spare was mounted to here. It's really cool looking. Okay. Cool. This is a Crown Coupe, a '64. Big car. Look at this thing. <laughs> it's as long as my excursion, if not longer. That's heavy. <laughs> it barely fits in here. Look at that. It is touching the back of the building. Wow, look at this. 1979. It's been. That's crazy. So this is a 70 Super B. Let's see what it started like. She's got a hole right here. So she's probably a little rotten on the bottom. These cars are rust bro. Look, it's got the fenders for it. It's got an extra hood. It must have had a car cover on to rust right here. Because that's pretty awesome. So it's, it's got 383 Magnum badges on the side, which I'm going to be coding in a minute and see if it's 383 Magnum car. Yeah, so there. It's pretty rotten, but it's rare. Let's see. It's a rare bee. You didn't bring a flashlight, did you, Sean? Uh, unfortunately, we're going to have to do the thing that everybody hates <laughs> and use our phone. So not only do you have keys. No. Okay, so this is this is a, this is a 383 four-barrel car. So all this, the 68 to 70s, This was the, these were Coronets when they started on. Then the Super B was the high performance model of the Coronet. This is the last year of the Coronet. So these were all high performance cars. This is a 383 four barrel, which unfortunately is the bottom rung of them. Because you can get a 444 barrel, 446 back, you can actually get a 426 Hemi car. Wow, that's, that would be one but, to have. Absolutely. But still, I mean, the 383 four barrels, not a slouch. So this would be a resto mod kind of car. Yes. Well, I'm assuming it depends if the numbers match the motor, so maybe they leave it. Automatic bucket seat console. Let's see the gauges. Looks like it has rally gauges. 150 mile an hour speedo. Nice. Yeah, four drives. Tick tock tack. So it's got the clock and the tack, which is really cool. And it looks like, we'll have to look at the fender tag, but if you look at the doors, they're yellow. It might have been top banana. Yeah, this car has got some rust issues. But got a 
hood and the fenders. It's a good start. Greasy enough, but it might be the original motor. Fender tags on it, which is nice. FY1. So that's an easy color to remember. Top banana, Y is yellow, so. It's definitely banana. <laughs> <laughs> 383, four barrel, matches your automatic, <laughs> rally gauges, top banana in color, power steering, no power brakes. Okay, what's next, guys? Very cool. A little rusty, a little crunchy. Yeah, uh, just a little bit. <laughs> my grandfather was a Mopar man. He worked for Chrysler for like 60 years. Wow. He collected cars and pretty much, this was his fashion. And in the later years, he passed in 2020. In the later years, he got dementia. So like going back to like 15, I started coming out here and kind of just maintaining things. I've pulled him out a couple of times, had him washed. You know, I'm not really a car person per se, but I knew that there was value in what he had. For sure. And you know, really like kind of holding them another year or two, or not holding them, but coronavirus kind of prevented me from selling them. This, kind of made it with the value. This is a really clean burger. Yeah, oh yeah. The Imperial and this were probably the two that I viewed as being the closest to being, you know, drivable and good to go. Now, I know, I know these all have titles, which is fantastic. No, just the T-Bird and the Imperial, I do not have titles for, but Those two, okay. I did a title search here, they did a national title search, nothing came back. So then numbers are so old that right. they're not in the system. They right. tried to archive them here. Yeah. So you can sell them on a bill sale then. Yeah. But there's no keys to any of them. No. Have you looked through all the cars? No, you know, I haven't. I, haven't I mean, maybe you hit them in one of these cars. Possibility. Hey, de de definitely. With your you granddad. Grab, so definitely yeah, possible. it's definitely possible with his granddad. That's for sure. Yeah, I haven't done that. I, that's, I did think about that too. Which one of these cars was his favorite car? That'd be the one. This one right here. Probably the Imperial. I'm sorry. Yeah, Charger. Charger. The Charger was the one they kept at this house. Okay, I well, I, that's gonna be the one I'm gonna give your keys first. What do you think, Sean P? I would tend to agree. Registration in here from 1985. Never, never pushed them out. Backseat, so luxurious. <coughs> Tears in good shape. 65 T bar. <coughs> I've noticed he had put new carburetors in all these. <laughs> this is a lot easier than rebuilding the original ones. All right. So bringing that stuff in. All right. Now we're talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because this is what's really came to sleep. <laughs> wow, white. White vinyl top. Triple white. Triple white. Wow. I couldn't really yeah. tell what color it was in the pictures. Yeah, yeah. triple white. It's a 68 Charger, which is obviously the car that they use in the movie, Bullet. Yeah, yeah. And 69 was General, was Dukes yeah, of Hazzard, right. General Lee. Yeah, then yeah. 70 was the one that Ben Diesel drove in Fast and Furious. Right. Well, what's so if we buy this today, we'll have the trifecta this year. We've oh. had all three of them. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Man. That has got to be unusual, triple white. Yeah, you see there's just a collection of things in there. Yeah, is this a scanner? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was a big CB guy, too. Uh, he wasn't running from the cops. And <laughs> 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 and <what's in? laughs> All right, Sean, if this is his favorite car, I think it would make the most sense to look at this car for keys. You feeling lucky? Is there a trick to the glow box? Like a set too far. This could be in here. A track. Yeah, a Perry James A track. Okay. Tick tock tack. Full gauges. It looks like it's an AC car. Now this one won't be an issue because the steering's not locked in it. No glow box. The door. No glow box. Okay, let's see what motor this car came with. So it is, it's two-door hardtop as opposed to a coupe, which is nice. Makes you don't have the B-pillar. Yep. And it's a G-code, so that's, it's a 383 two-barrel. But, I mean, these cars, you could have got a six-owner all the way up to a Hemi car. Let's see what's in there now. Okay, you got it. Okay. 
fender tags here. Engine basement blacked out, that's kind of odd. Is that two barrel or four barrel? Two. Yep. Jamie Wells is a fan of two barrels. Really? Yeah, he specializes in them. I'll right, we'll chuck that back on. With racing engines. 383 two barrel. This, this car doesn't look like it's been messed with. The butterfly. Where did I drop it? The butterfly just went to the ground. It's okay, it's on the ground. I think this car was not originally white. It was this burgundy, metallic burgundy color because that's what part of the trim tag is. And somebody changed it to triple white. Which is cool, but I don't think it's original. There's of course ports in it, so it doesn't look like it's been hit in the front other than that little bend right there. The last one is have, the, have you ever heard that car run, Steve? Um, no, but I might. So that was the car that he stored in his home in his garage. Okay. And that was the one he was actually working on himself. So that was his favorite car? Yeah, that was his favorite for sure. Okay. For sure. Well, I understand that. Yeah. <laughs> I like the Super V too. I think it's cool. Yeah. And you know, so the Super Imperial's Super cool. You never see those. Yeah, yeah. And here's the Ram Charger. We've got to move some of this stuff out of here. Wow. A lot of parts for the Ram Charger. I'm actually a big fan of these. So now, did you say this is an 89? Yep. Okay. Ooh, doors are locked. <laughs> this one's open. Thank goodness, this one's locked. That would really be something. How many miles are on shot? Uh, 96? 98. Let's see if you can pull it from this. So it's got a temp tag on it. It looks like from 2010. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so I'm to say, he got a lot the, of them on the road. He bought this one 12 years ago? At least he had it on the road 12 years ago. Oil change says 09 and it says uh, change at 101, so that's definitely 98. Didn't go very far from the last oil change. So I think that's, uh, these were 360 with fuel injection, which is the one to have if you want to work. I need a little work. Not so, good. are you guys friends with the wrecking yard next door? No, uh, no not by chance. Okay. <laughs> I do know uh, that's one of the recycling places. There's new cars around the corner. I have a connection with the guy there, Nick. We may need a forklift. I can go over there and make friends because they, they had a truck with a stinger on it. Yeah, but I think, I mean, good, moving, the, uh, moving this without keys is going to be right. really good. Oh, yeah, yeah, this will never yeah. explain. <laughs> We never tried to get this back to tow company. Yeah, see, it is 5'9. 89. That's, I mean, this is great. It's very cool. 360 fuel injected. I mean, it's one thing we, we you know, I don't say we commonly find the Blazers in the Broncos, but we just never see these. Well, nobody was really into Dodges like they were Ford and Chevrolet. And they never changed their sauce either. Cruise control, too. Yeah. This body style was this way forever. What else we got? Uh, the last one is a 93. Jack Jaguar, yeah, okay. It's a bunch of junk in there. Uh, XJ6, so it's a six-cylinder car, not a 12-cylinder, which would be an XJ12. Yeah. There is an XJ12 that's off-site, 85, 80, 85. Okay. Do we have a title to that one? Well, I don't claim to be an expert on Jaguar XJ6s. <laughs> All right. So my thought is, after seeing all six of these, the V8 truck's in better shape than I anticipated. But of course, I love the 68 Charger, the 70 Super B, and the 89. This is really cool. It's really, it's really hard. It's rare to see that. But, got quite the pickle. We have no keys, we got flat tires, and these are heavy. Well, Steve, I'll tell you what, the Ram Chargers, the 70 Super B and the 68 Charger, uh, we had talked on the phone. Um, I'm just going to agree to pay what we 
Sounds what we great. said on that. So we got a deal on those three. Sounds great. And while we're loading these, I'm gonna see if I can beat you up a little bit on the price of the truck. Okay. Okay, okay. fair enough. So I don't, I'm gonna pay you, I'll get the titles, okay. and okay. then hopefully you guys aren't gonna run. Oh, no, 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 no. Because getting these on is not gonna be easy. No, 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 yeah, we'll be, yeah, we got All right, all right let me get my bag, I'll, give you, I'll get you paid, we'll get the titles, and we'll figure out how to cool. get them out. Hey, Sean, yeah. what do you think? I think I'm gonna go next door and see if we can rent that stinger. I think that is the best idea you've had in a while. <laughs> <laughs> so he's owned this car since 72. How cool no, is no, that? No, no, he didn't. I think, I think he bought it in... Uh, I'm like a Zach reference this time. That's as old as me. There you go. 89 Ram Charger, clear title. Nice. 70 Dodge Super V, clear title. And the title's from 72, which is really neat. That's a good looking title. They are kind of a work of art back then. They were. You don't happen to have the one from the 55, do you? 68. Alright. Nope, yeah, that's 55. No, I just need this. I need the, uh, you, you gave me the 89 and the 70. I need the 68 charger title. Uh, yeah. There you go, it's in my hands. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm off today. No, I right. haven't had no coffee <laughs> yet. <laughs> Long trip. <laughs> okay, we're going to walk next door and see if we can make this easy. If not, yeah. then we'll start muscling them. Yeah. Right. If, we, if, they, we, if we can't hire those guys, then we'll, we'll get the jacks out and right. we'll start pushing and the, uh, the 68 will be really easy because the steering's not locked. Yeah. yeah. The other, one, the other ones won't be yeah. easy. Yeah. So literally next door when we drove in is a pick you park, which is a wrecking yard. They've got to have a forklift. Let's hope. So we're going to go next door and see if we can hire their forklift or their guy and or a wrecker to help us because muscling these, I don't think it's possible. It's not possible. So wish us luck. Let's see what happens. I just need you to pick them up and set them on our trailer with your forklift. If you're talking about us leaving our property, it's, I don't know if you have this, it's this building attached to y'all. So we're at Pick Your Part, we tried to hire them to bring the forklift over to put them on the trailer because it would have taken like five minutes. Um, we couldn't talk them into that. So they gave us the name of a record driver, his name's Victor, who supposedly is really good at working miracles and getting stuff out of tight spots and he is on his way. Well, we didn't completely strike out, but we didn't win. Oh, uh, <laughs> got some straps. Uh, we got straps and we got a tow truck coming. Oh, okay, that's what I was gonna say because they was gonna we was gonna call the tow truck for this '93 to pull out of here for the scrapyard. So we could have. He'll be well. The the tow truck's actually coming to the scrapyard than over here. Oh, okay. So you probably got y'all as well. Oh, okay. Um, there it is. If couldn't get the forklift, so okay. we're gonna pull that one out since it's not locked, and, get, yep. and we'll just winch it on. Yep. All of us can get that out without a problem. But the tow yep. truck will be here in about 30 minutes. All right. '68 Dodge Charger. You can always tell when you walk up with these, especially for the back. Probably the most iconic car of the '68 to the '70 Chargers. Again, this is a 383 two-barrel car, automatic, console, bucket seats. It's triple white, but I think it's been color changed. You can look on the trim tag. Gauges, and it's also an air-conditioned car, so nicely optioned car. It's straight. It does have some rust at the bottom of the quarters, but it'll definitely get restored. Dash is decent. You clearly see the VIN tag here. You got your XP29, which is nice because it, it is actually is it's you don't have the B pillar here, so there are about 10,000 of these built, and about 2,000 with the B pillar in them. Neat car. XP29G, 383 two barrel. Really neat to see one that has not been messed with at all. Just completely stocked, very stock under the hood. It's even got the original hubcaps. That one didn't fight us. The other two are gonna be a fight. Let's go fight them.
All right, 68 Chargers loaded. 70 Super B's on its way. We're gonna pull it up backwards. I've gotta get this, these locks open. It's kind of a problem. But we'll run the winch cable underneath the 68, and pull the 70 on, so we're lucky to have this slide truck here. This would have been really difficult. I think we could have turned about three hours or four hours worth of work into hopefully less than an hour. So here we go. So this car is actually pretty amazing. The floors are good in it. The truck drop-offs are good in it. You gotta see this chassis, I'm actually shocked. Really good car, really good. All right. It's on the trailer, it is fighting us. Four flat tires, it has reverse lockout, it's in park, and the bumper stuck on the trailer. You want some worse news? Yeah, let's have some worse news. Uh, the winch just said I'm out. And the winch is tired. Yeah, it won't pull it. Okay, well, we'll have to uh, hire that dude to use his winch. All right. Is actually going to back it all the way on the trailer. We put the ramps out of the way so they can come back further because we don't have keys. So the pick and pull slash the LKQ next door said the Victor guy, the guys from Victor's Towing, the work miracles, I think they did. You and Sean P. Way to go, Sean. I didn't even supervise. So today definitely fell under the nothing's easy category. Two wreckers, we're pulling with a Jeep in our winch to get those three cars on. Woo, three hours. But we got some great cars and uh, maybe we'll have a great lunch. Steve, last question. Gotcha. Favorite local place to eat? Oh, <laughs> you know what? I'm not from Rockford. I don't have a favorite place. Any suggestions? Nothing? Probably one of the park is okay. Yeah, but the little breakfast place that we were talking oh, yeah. about going to look pretty good. Lydia's. Lydia's. What's it called? Lydia's. Lydia's. Okay. Well, if you guys want to go, it's on me. We're going to strap those down and go eat. Yeah. Well, no pressure. If you change yeah. your mind, let me know. We'll be yeah. around a little bit, strap down the parts. Thanks again. Yeah, any thoughts on the truck? Pleasure to meet you. You too. Time. It's so already any thoughts on the F100? I'm going to call you next time we come okay. up, see okay. if it's still here. Gotcha, gotcha. Deal? Gotcha. We can't load it anyways. Nah, yeah, I realize it. I realize and we're up here often. Oh, okay. Okay. It's not that far from me. I don't mind shooting over. All right, we'll be here for a little bit longer. Okay, yep. All right, thank, thank you, guys. Good to meet you, sir. So we're at the Prairie Street Brewing Company, even though it says Rockford Brewing Company, so I'm sure there's a story behind that. The restaurant that the gentleman recommended us, Lydia's Cafe, was already closed by the time we got all the cars on the trailer. It is 92 degrees outside. It took us almost three and a half hours. We had to go shower. So we're going to go to Rockford Brewing Company or Prairie Street Brewing Company. We're not sure. I would like uh, an unsweet tea. Sure. I'll take a sweet tea. We'll do the cheese curds, the chicken curds. I am out of the chicken curds. Ah. We are about to reprint our menus. I should okay. have warned you. All right. Um, what is on your, uh, under mental. these under these starters? What is kind of your specialty thing? I would say rocket quesadilla is great. Um, I love our taquitos. They're super good. Okay, we'll do the Korean. We'll do the taquitos and the cheese curds. Taquitos and some curds. And yeah, then the like Korean street tacos too. Sure. Okay. I think that's a good idea, Sean. I'll agree right with that. There. 
And then for the meal, yeah. we're going to do all the big plates. All the big plates. So the Cajun mac and cheese, black and chicken vodka, PSB ribs, yep. and, uh, Faroe, Faroe Island salmon, okay. fish and chips. And get a side choice with the fish and chips. Really extra sauce. Um, hmm. Wedges are super popular with it. We have like big, big spice. Sounds good. Spice baked wedges. That's fine. Sounds good. And then the Wagyu flank steak. Okay. And can you cook that medium rare? Absolutely. I think that'll get us going. That'll do it. Do you want me to break up the appetizers first? Whatever is easiest for you in the in the kitchen. Sure. How's that? I know if you want to do it. Whatever's easiest when he's cooking it, it's fine. Okay, okay, sounds good. This ought to be interesting. Oh, we got marina down there too. I mean, okay, what do we have here? Korean tacos. Okay. All right, I'll put those there for you. Delish. Taquitos. Where you Same want? Same place. Just anywhere. Anywhere. Yes. All right, those up there. And cheese curds. Cheese curds. Oh, yeah. It's cheese like a local curds. thing, right? What the sinus stretching? Cheese curds is our number one seller by. We're gonna need. Uh, Hundreds of items. <laughs> really? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So cheese curds is your number one thing. Number one, number one thing right there. How about, what's your number one thing on the big plates? Um, what is the number one thing? Um, probably the uh, the black and chicken vodka. Although I think, I mean, I was telling these guys that Wagyu steak is like best uh, best menu item, most undersold. You know, but it's, well, we ordered it. It's delicious. <laughs> yeah. It's so delicious. this is we're talking to one of the owners here. The original brewery was right there in 1847. It's amazing. And then they moved here 10 years later, and this has been here since 1857. Yep, yep. So it was a brewery up until Prohibition, and then they tried to get it going after Prohibition, couldn't quite make it, and then it sat pretty much vacant until uh, yeah, it was bought in 2000, and then we renovated this place. And Made it where it is in 2012, so. Well, it's a cool place. It's amazing. <laughs> it is on the river, which I got a great view out there, but since we were in the heat, 92 degrees today, it was humid for three and a half hours, we decided to sit inside. It would be nice, <laughs> it'd be nice on your patio, but AC is way better. So yeah, thanks, yeah, for, yeah, right. thanks for having us. Yeah, no. I'm gonna try cheese curry. Guys. I'm gonna try the number one thing you sell. These are big curds. Yeah, it's a beer batter made with our Screw City. Man, I think that is super cheesy. Mm -hmm. That's really, really good. good. <laughs> I'll start with the cheese curds were a hit. I'll start with the cheese mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Huh. You know what, Zach? That might be the best Mac you've ever rated. Zach and cheese, that is on. We'll see. Wow. There you go, we got the chicken vodka. Ooh. Chicken vodka. Okay. okay, that's their number one selling item and the one that's most recommended. Okay. All right, we got the Atlantic salmon. Oh, look at that, beautiful butter in that one. Wow, beautiful. Okay, and the ribs are coming. So far, our presentation is amazing. Berkshire ribs, small boys. Holy moly. I think I'm gonna start my meal with rib. And we have Fish and chips. Okay. Where are the chips? The wedges. <laughs> the wedges. <laughs> oh, and then the creme de la creme. The Wagyu. Last but not least, we have the Wagyu steak. Oh, right. right here, sir. Look at that. How's that looking for you, fellas? Wow. I love the corn rash on top. Look at that. What's your favorite? Me personally, I go with the Cajun Mac Boss. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Never disappoint. So we got Zach's on camera. We call him macaroni and cheese. Ooh. His favorite thing in the world is macaroni and cheese. I like that. He's literally. He's a yeah. connoisseur. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So okay. we're gonna try. He has now got a ten out of ten. Yet. Yo, okay. okay. Not yet. Not yet. You won't be disappointed here. I won't let All you right. guys down. Uh, I'm gonna start with a rib and the wagyu first. Sounds amazing. All right. Thank All you, right. sir. You guys enjoy. Hey, can you yeah. need anything can else? Can we get two plates? Two plates, most definitely. Thank you, sir. <laughs> okay. Who would have thunk it? This is not bar food or brewery food. This is just not incredible food. I'd almost go for the Zach, and she, I mean the mac and cheese, but I don't want to screw that up for Zach. Okay, I'll take that. Go one. ahead. Here, those plates are for you folks. Thank you, sir. No right. problem. You guys enjoy. Thank you, sir. I'm stealing this from you, Sean P. Wow. Look at that. Medium rare. Ooh. Beautiful. You know what? 
Work hard, play hard, eat right. Or wrong. Depending on how you look at it. I appreciate how hard you guys work today, so let's have a killer meal. Now, which is gonna be best bite? It's gotta be Wagyu. That's what the owner said, so here we go. Everybody says? <laughs> wow. Hang on, I gotta try the The ribs, the shit. Yeah, the wagon is fantastic, it really is. Fall off the bone. I should be picking this up, but I got other things I wanna eat, so I'm gonna get my hands dirty. Two for two. I'm gonna go ahead of you, Zach, but I won't, I won't rate it. Wow, look at that. So, and this is not a dig, but this is the most expensive macaroni and cheese I've ever seen in my life. That uh, almost costs as much as the Wagyu. I think we're fixing to find out that it's probably worth it. Wow. Zach, <laughs> you're gonna have to be a deal breaker on that one. All right, this is a great call here. Prairie Street Brewery, been here since 1857. The chocolate cake gelato. Awesome. Birthday cheesecake, nice. chocolate cake Boy's gelato. Chocolate. That's yours, Sean. And this is bar food. My this is man. not bar food. Oh. And a root beer float. <laughs> wow. Outstanding. No, it's perfect. We might need a. Uh, I think we have plenty of spoons and everything. Awesome. Oreo, chocolate, some more. Wow. Birthday cheesecake. Wait, what? Well, I love cheesecake, so the bottom layer is cake. That's, That's why they call it that. Yep. That's amazing. Chocolate gelato cake. Wow. If you live in Rockford, Illinois, have never been here, you got problems. Yeah. Or if you just simply live in a loaf of bread. But if you're passing through, this is really a pleasant surprise. The food is fantastic. So, can we finish it? Yeah, let's finish. <laughs> they got a lot of spoons. Come on, Sean P. Oh my God. <laughs> Holy that was a pleasant surprise. The food was absolutely amazing. Outstanding. It's outside. as good as a restaurant that you have to wear a suit. So we are definitely gonna give this an as seen on coffee walk. Again, if you're in Rockford, Illinois, this place is a must to eat. Then here's this 1857. Let's see if I can do that. Boom. Please like, tag, share, and follow. And remember, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we now have a TikTok. See you later.